All right, today's day two of four three. We're going to talk about concavity and points of inflection. Um, I drew a couple functions here in blue, um, and you can notice we have a max here because the derivative is changing from positive to negative, so that would ensure us by the first derivative test that we have a max. Um, but what I want to talk today about is how this function is considered concave down. And there's a couple of ways you can picture something being concave down. One way is it's kind of the upside down U shape or like an N. Um, another way is, is would it hold water? If I poured water in from a spigot right here and water came out, would it run off or would it puddle up? And it would definitely run off the sides here. Um, so that's a couple ways you can think of concavity. Um, when you have a minimum value, you see over on this side, if I had a spigot of water here, you could see our water would start puddling up and getting higher and higher. So I think that is, that's what we call concave up. And also another way to look at it is a parabola like this is concave up. It kind of looks like the letter U which is an up, so that might help you also. So we're going to talk about concavity and how a function could be concave up and then all of a sudden they be concave down. And the concavity may change multiple times uh, in a function. Um, looking on the left side here, the blue line is concave up again. Water would, if I would continue to be concave up, would be that, would, would be on top of the line. Um, and concave down would be the red one. Again, it's more part of the end. So it's like this part right here is the concave down part that we have drawn. And of the concave up of the you can see this blue part is kind of this part of the U I'm drawing. So basically if you can take this chunk and put it at, in an N or take the blue chunk and put it in a U, you know you're in the concave up part. The figure I have on the right, um, what I've drawn in there is some tangent lines. And if you can notice where the tangent lines are in respect to the function, the blue function. All these tangent lines I would consider to be below the function. Below the blue function. And if tangent lines are below the functions, you know the function is concave up. If the tangent lines are below the function, the function is concave up. If the functions are above, or, I'm sorry, if the derivative tangent lines, if the tangent lines are above the function, you can see I consider these above the function, then the function is concave down. So tangent lines um, are below the blue function and it's concave up. Tangent lines are above the function, it would be concave down. So this, there's a couple different ways then you can tell if it's concave down or concave up. Here's another red function here that um, we can talk about. Uh, again, we have functions that are the derivative or the tangent line is above, and then down in here the tangent lines are below. And in here the tangent line is almost right on there. Now it's above, above, kind of right on, below, below, below. So here it's concave down. Here, from about this point right here, it's now changing to concave up. And then right in here about it's changing from concave up to concave down. And then again here it does the same thing. Those are called points of inflection. 
where the concavity changes. And points of inflection happen when the derivative, the second derivative is zero. It could also be where the second derivative doesn't exist. Um, so when you have like a cusp or something, that could be a point of inflection also. Um, Our job, then, in this lesson is to be able to find the points of inflection. And once you find the points of inflection, we do that by doing this. What happens in between the two points of inflection will either be always concave down, or always concave up, or always concave down. So once we find the points of inflection, the regions in between are going to be always concave one way or the other. So finding the second derivative zeros, plotting the chart of those intervals, and then testing the sign. Now, the sign that we're going to test is the sign of the second derivative. And we'll show that here. When you, I don't know how well you can see this, I'm going to draw this in a little bit better for you. Um, let's change my line here a little bit. It's going to go a little bit thicker. This is function okay so hopefully you can see that and the red lines are tangent lines and what I want you to notice is as so this is the first tangent line right here and then as I move up the graph this would be the second tangent line as I move up the graph this would be the third tangent line and as I keep going this would be the next one if you look at the slope of those, the slope starts pretty steep and it's getting closer and closer to zero. And so the slope is decreasing. The slope is decreasing. That is another test to see when the function is concave down. When the slope decreases, it's concave down. So that means how fast the slope is changing is the second derivative. And so that means the second derivative is negative because the rate of change for the derivative is minus. And over here, you can see the tangent lines are getting from this one to this one to this one to steeper yet. As the derivative now, as the slope is increasing, that means the second derivative is positive. And that means F is concave up on that interval. So for concavity, we have a bunch of different ways to tell. But algebraically, it's going to be either F prime increasing or F double prime positive. Remember before, um, that means concave up. Before we said if f prime is positive, we said f is increasing. And it's the same exact thing. If you take the derivative of a function and, the, and you find the sign of that derivative, that tells you whether the function is increasing or decreasing. Well, if you take this function and take its derivative, and get the sign, that means f prime is increasing then. And then f prime increasing means concave up. So very similar to what we did before, just with one derivative farther. So we're concave up. 
on the interval when y prime is increasing, which means y double prime is positive. We are concave down when y prime is decreasing, which means y double prime is negative. Okay, and we just answered this quest. How do we know when y, y double prime is increasing? Because we look for when y double prime is positive. So, concavity test. Here's the steps. We're going to find the second derivative, and we're going to set it equal to zero, and set it equal to does not exist. See if we can list all those x values. We're going to chart them just like we did before, and we're going to see when the second derivative is positive or minus, because this would be tell me if y prime is increasing or y prime is decreasing. If y prime is increasing, we are concave up. If y prime is decreasing, we are concave down. So very similar to what we did before with different results. So let's try one. We have f of x equals x cubed. We want to know concavity. So we're going to find the second derivative. We're going to set the second derivative equal to 0. That will find us critical points. We're also going to see if the second derivative doesn't exist. There are none of those. is f double prime equals 0, f double prime equals does not exist, there's none of those, we don't have endpoints, so we're going to make a chart, um, with those intervals, so we're going from negative infinity to 0, 0 to infinity. We are testing the sign of the second derivative, and we do that in the second derivative. So I pick a number like negative 10, that gives me a negative number. When I plug a number in like 10, I get a positive number. If f double prime is negative, that means f prime is increasing or decreasing. But we're not really answering that question. What we really want to know is the concavity. If we get a negative second derivative, we are concave down. If we are positive, we are concave up. So we're concave down from the interval of negative infinity to zero because the second derivative is negative. We are concave up from 0 to infinity because the second derivative is positive. Again, points of inflections where the concavity changes. So at x equals 0, we have a point of inflection. Point of inflection. So, points of inflection are where the graph changes concavity. Here we are concave down, and here we are concave up. So, in summary now, we have functions where we know they're increasing and decreasing, we know where functions have maxes and mins. We now know the concavity, which tells us kind of how to draw the graph from one point to the next. Um, we know points of inflection. Assignment page 204, 7 through 12.